Now let us do an application of this for an angle section let us say the cross section is in the shape of an angle. Okay, so in the shape of an angle, let us assume that uh, this distance is B as does this distance, this also B. Let us assume that this thickness is T and this thickness is also. Okay, let us assume that thickness is also T. Okay, now the axis is first. You have to find where the CG of the cross section is, right? First, you have to find the CG of the cross section. CG or centroid of the cross section of the cross section is something you have to find first. Okay, let us assume for that initially your y and z axis is oriented like this, this is y and this is the z axis. Okay. With respect to this I am finding the centroid of the cross section. Okay. Now I know that for let me close this, let me assume that I am closing this and the centroid of this leg of the angle section would be somewhere here and that would be let us say that is uh, let us say that this centroid is y leg centroid and let us say this is z leg centroid okay and for this now for this portion of the leg there will be another centroid which is here okay. So let us say this is y m c g z m c g okay. Now the distance of this from this end the centroid of this leg from this end would be T plus B by 2, right? Okay. And then the distance of this centroid from here to there would be B by 2 plus T, okay. Now, uh, this portion of the centroid, this distance would be T by 2, as this, this distance, this distance also is going to be t by 2 okay so to find the y centroid y c g of the cross section what should i do i have to take the leg area that is b plus t into t okay times the center of the leg region along the y direction along the y direction is this distance is along the y direction so that is t by 2 as we have estimated here okay. So y c g would be the area of the leg b plus t into t into the y distance which will be t by 2 okay plus the area of the web that is this area that will be b into t into the y distance from the origin that is the corner most point to the center of that that will be this distance that will be that distance which will be b by 2 plus t okay. So we have accounted for two areas and then the entire cross section divided by the total area of the cross section which will be b plus t into t plus b into t okay. Now I can simplify this equation to be given by I can cancel a t throughout so that will become b plus t into 
t plus b into b plus 2 t divided by 2 into 2 b plus t ok. So, this will simplify it to further 3 b t plus b square plus t square divided by 2 into 2 b plus t ok. Now, similarly let me find the z centroid of the cross section ok. Now, what is that we have found the y centroid right what is that that is nothing but this location that is centered of the cross section this is C g of cross section ok and this distance is y C g cross section ok. And now what you are going to do is move this axis from there to a y C g to z C g ok you want to move it to there ok. Now, similarly I am interested in finding what this distance what this distance is that C g of cross section is ok from that 10. So, towards that what I have to do again I have to find the area of the bottom leg b plus t into t into the z distance of its centroid which would be this distance b plus t by 2. So, it will be b plus t by 2 plus for the vertical member for this member for this vertical member it will be plus b into t which is the area of that member into its z distance of the centroid which is this distance in here that is this t by 2 in there. So, into t by 2 divided by b plus t into t plus b t ok. So, this again I can cancel the t throughout and this will become b square plus t square plus 2 b t plus b t divided by 2 into 2 b plus t which is nothing but same as that that is what we expect because the angle is a symmetrical angle ok. So, z c g and y c g has to be same ok. Now, next what I am interested is I am interested in finding i z z about the c g axis c g of the cross section axis ok. Now, I am going to use parallaxis theorem ok. I know that the moment of inertia of this uh, horizontal leg will be 1 by 12 into b plus t into t cube that is about this z axis that is about this z axis. Now, I have to to that add this y c g c s squared the area of that leg area of this leg right. So, that be plus using parallel axis theorem area of the leg is b plus t into t into y c g cross section minus t by 2 the whole square ok. That is for the horizontal leg for the vertical leg I will have plus 1 by 12 t into b cube plus b into t is the area of that into I have to look at the shift from year to year ok. This distance would be b by 2 plus t this entire distance is b by 2 plus t ok that is this this distance minus y c g cross section will give me 
resistance in here okay so that will be b by 2 plus t minus ycg cross section whole square okay uh, i am not going to simplify this i am going to leave it as it because uh, it serves no meaningful purpose now for our discussions similarly i y y is for the horizontal leg it will be 1 by 12 t into b plus t the whole cube plus b plus t into t into the horizontal shift into I have to multiply by this distance squared okay that distance squared would be b plus t by 2 is this distance minus z c g s c s would give me that distance so that will be b plus t by 2 minus z c g c s will be that distance squared okay plus for the vertical leg for a vertical leg it will it is going to be 1 by 12 this is b d cube instead of b d cube i have to do d b cube now because i am looking at moment of inertia about the y axis so it is going to be b t cube plus that area b into t into the shift that is I would look at this distance for the shift along the z axis along the y axis okay moment of inertia along the y axis about the y axis I would look at this shift okay. So, basically that will be z c g c s minus t by 2 the whole square okay. In all these things it did not matter for us whether the shift was positive along the positive direction or the negative direction because you are squaring the distance. So, I always took the distance to be a positive number, but when it comes to i y z when I want to compute i y z about the centroid I want to compute i y z about the central axis okay. Now, this will be the moment of inertia about the center of the cross section which is 0 for this case and there will be only the shifting term right. So, it matters whether the shift is positive or negative along the x and y direction y and z direction okay. So, let us look what it is for the uh, horizontal member let us look what is the shift for this horizontal member okay. So, it is area b plus t into t because the basic moment of inertia i y z about the center of the cross section is 0 for this orientation of the axis for this rectangular section right. So, that is that is 0. So, I am left only the shifting term the shifting term would be for the uh, horizontal leg you add this and this as a shifting terms. So, basically now that will be y cross section c g minus t by 2 into b plus t by 2 minus z cross section c s okay. Now, should this be positive or negative is the question okay. So, what happens both the shifts are in the negative y direction and in the negative z direction. So, negative negative will balance out to give positive direction positive value okay. Similarly, next what you have to do is you have to look at the shift in the uh, vertical leg. So, the area of that vertical leg is b times t okay. Now, what is the distance you have to use you have to use this distance b plus t minus y c g s and z c g s minus t by 2 is the distance you have to use. So, that will be b by 2 plus t minus y cross section c g into z cross section 
cg minus t by 2 ok. Now what happens now both the shifts are in the partially positioned uh, coordinate of that of the vertical member ok. So, hence this also remains positive ok. So, the shift terms are positive so you get i y z to be given by this expression in here for the angle section equal angle section ok. Now, so the point is i y z is not equal to 0 it has some finite value. Now, you have to find the orientation such that i y z goes to 0 ok that will give you the principal orientation of the principal axis ok. So, that axis would be theta p the orientation of the principal axis will be 1 half tan inverse 2 times i y z of the cross centroidal axis divided by i z z or central axis minus i y y or central axis ok. So, for this angle section you will find that such an axis would be oriented like this ok. Such an axis would have orientation this was y cross sectional c g z cross sectional c g and the centroid was this is the c g of the cross section ok. Now, what happens is the principal axis is oriented at an angle theta p given by there that is a clockwise rotation. So, the principal axis this is u c g this will be v c g cross section this angle would be theta p and for this angle i u v would be 0 ok i u v would be 0 ok. So, for equal angle that is how that is the orientation of the principal axis ok thank you.